Steve, can you come here and let me welcome just Steve for now, Steve Gilmore, who is being there, mate, of the Gilmore Gang, and uh, he will um, introduce his, uh, his show with us. No, just, well, I wanted just Steve, but that's okay. It, it's just to just give them time. Like, come, come, everybody, please, Hugh, come, all right. Steve, can you come here with me as they... Uh, yeah, um, so I was right. drunk already. Who, who do we miss, Michael Arrington? Yeah, uh, He'll be here. Yeah, Mike is there. So, can you tell me, as you, as Michael is coming on the stage, uh, like, so what's, what's the Gilmore Gang for anybody who, I, I don't mean to offend you in any way. That's all right. But in Europe, maybe, you know, a few people don't know, or maybe around the world on... Uh, well, we don't know either, actually, so... You don't know? No. It's, so, so what's the Gilmore Gang? It was just a phone call that we used to have, and uh, we decided to record it. That's it. Hello. That's it. Yeah. And, and what's... It's there a, you know, a bunch of people like this guy, and... Scoble and uh, and so anybody can call in at any time, right? No, no, no. no. Only uh, we were going to have Jason Calacanis, but he he couldn't make it. Oh. And Dan Farber was uh, trying to be here, but where's the Wi-Fi? <laughs> well, Wi-Fi is actually okay now. Okay, good. Did you want to introduce them, maybe? Yeah, I do. All right. Why don't you sit down and? Join Are you us? want me to stay, actually? Yeah, absolutely. Because Michael didn't want to. All right. No, no Michael didn't want me to. All right. Sitting on my lap or what? Yeah. Hello. Okay, so this is uh, welcome to the Gilmore Gang. I'm Steve Gilmore, and uh, we're doing this live. So uh, I'm going to start in reverse order uh, <laughs> and introduce the people on the uh, on the show. Over on the left is Mark Cantor. Yo yo yo. Doc Searles yo. of Clue Train fame. And am I going to be able to say about that or not? I uh, just say whatever you like. All right, well, we'll see. I, I can't say it. Doc's horse and can't speak, which will be good because there's so many people here. Uh, Loic Lemur, you've heard of him. Gabe Rivera, the master, uh, what is he, the, uh, the Wizard of Oz in the, uh, in the tech sphere. Oh. Hugh McLeod, the famous Hugh McLeod. Oh, yeah. Lauren Feldman. Where's the puppet? Where's the puppet? <laughs> Scoble's the puppet tonight. Scoble's the puppet. Watch his left hand. So. Some guy named Scoble. And the chairman of the board, Mike Arrington. OK, so the way this works is that we try not to get into an argument too quickly. You want red or white? <laughs> red. So That's wrong. Duck, you want? I don't Scoble agree wants an argument. We can't we're agree not going to do it. Red or white? That's That's not red or white? So I'd like to take care of White. a little business. Right. Uh, Mark Cantor. Yes, yes. Uh, you never answered the question that Mike Arrington asked you uh, during your panel, which was... Uh, why was I so light on Facebook? Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to know why he's so yeah. light on Marissa Mayer. Red or white? If he gets a bitch at me, Red. I get to bitch at him. Are you then each other's bitches? He's, that he's light. You were light on Marissa. I wasn't, I wasn't light on Marissa Mayer. Dude, that, those, those weren't but even I will softballs. Those were bowling. I, I will say this. I, I trashed her over Search Wiki. Oh, I mean, right come on. on. I pushed her on, on Chrome. I think that I asked some tough questions. But more, more importantly, I was honest with myself, and I was intellectually honest. Well, red, what red, you red. did was you acted as red, though red, it's red, in white, the no user's white, best interest to have an open system, an open software stack. But. And I don't know. Well, hold on. Red, and I don't believe that's necessarily yeah. true. I think it's in the user's best interest to have the best user experience in whatever device, platform, piece of software, or anything else that they're using. And Facebook Connect is a pretty damn nice piece of software. And what we see in the open stack right now doesn't compare. Okay, so you I, started off your entire talk with a blunt statement that open is better. And I right. think the discussion should have been, is open better? Okay, so, so let me say that I agree with you that today, the solution that's being offered in the open stack is inferior to the integrated Facebook's approach, which is, by the way, how Apple is better than Microsoft, right? The integrated hardware and software, the Macintosh and iPod, is better than existing things. However, we are talking about a world that has to have money for everybody. Mark Zuckerberg doesn't get to make all the money. Okay? I think, I think that the, the people who build the best solution should get all the money. 
and to try to create some sort of socialistic system out of, so no. out of social networking so that all the players can participate and get their piece of the pie okay, let me isn't ask what's best the for the users. Now let's ask the audience. Now, audience, would you like to seed all social media to Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg, or would some of you like to get, live off some of the crumbs left behind? Okay, who's in favor of crumbs? Okay, all right, who wants to give all the money to Facebook? Okay, well, you, they don't care. They don't vote either way. Fuck them. I'm sorry. About? They're reading they're here, anyway. They're here Who to in the water? audience is on Facebook at least once a day? Yeah, so fuck you, Cantor. I mean, seriously. <laughs> right there, that's it. That's yeah. it. But, but see, some of us can have principles... But, you know, like, I have the principle, the ideal of where we're going. That was a man two that, years ago who said, I can change the world. I can run for president and win. Okay? I don't care about the money, though. I care that Facebook can kick you off and not just kick you off, but totally erase you. Erase your photos, erase your videos, erase everything about you, your wall posts, everything. That's your what I'm messages, talking about. your contact What list. do you say to that, Mr. Arrington? I think what Scoble is talking about is earlier this year when he put an unauthorized script yep. uh, created by Plaxo that downloaded in free text Microsoft uh, does the exact all, same of thing the, now. all of the email addresses exactly. of all of his friends, which violated the security policy and the privacy policy of Facebook, and they turned off his account for like a day, and he had a huge hissy fit over it. So you don't so, mind having fascist kind of control like that? Sometimes fascism works. I mean, the iPod oh. is, an, is a hell of a device. Now, I just want to point out, Michael, we are in Europe. Okay? Now, in America, we had fascism. We let them get away with it. Here in Europe, do you put up with fascism? No. You have wars, and you kill people for fascists. In America, we re-elect fascists. So, just to, just to summarize your argument, Facebook kills people. <laughs> Look, if they, if they turn off my friend Robert Scoble's account, as far as I'm concerned, he's dead. So, I was dead for 24 hours. Well, enjoy this because, you know, when Obama's in office, it's going to be just... How come we can't hear you? Kumbaya. No microphone. What? We can't hear you. You've got to speak up. Mike. How's that? You Can you hear That's me? Much better. All right. Well, let's give uh, Doc Searles, who has no voice, That's right. Let's have Doc's a support moment. open. Doc, why do you think people want yeah, no, to be hey, open? Hey, Mark. It's called the Gilmore Gang. Okay. okay? <laughs> Down here is the Cantor Gang. Thank it's you. It's seceding over... So what's the question? Is the there a The question, question is, do you believe all this open bullshit? Why is it, it, Mark's interpreting for you. He's saying, why is open better than closed? Well, open supports more than closed does. That's all there is to it. Open, open gives you lots and lots of building materials to build all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I think Facebook is a, a really great thing for the next couple of years, and there'll be something after that. <laughs> it's, a, it's yet another tree that does not grow to the sky. You know, that's... You mean when it's bought by Twitter, in other words? Yes, right, exactly. I think no, I you've heard you. about that, I guess. Yeah. I'm okay, nice. Loic. Yes. What about all this open bullshit? Uh, I, I I spoke too much over two days, over the last two days. So I, I I'd like Gabe to answer the question. Oh, it's the Gilmore Gang, right? Yeah. No, I asked you a question. What do you think about this open stuff? I mean, why do you have all this open uh, controversy at a show that's about making money? Um. Because my show is not about making money. It's about love, right? It's about love. It's not, it, no, I mean, seriously, you know, yeah, thanks for asking, but uh, it's, uh, it's been five years and it break events, and it, it's already a, a huge, you know, I think a huge thing to be able to break even this, and you give me an opportunity to thank all the sponsors who are, you know, paying the bills and yourself in the room who contributed by buying your tickets. But yeah, no, it's, it's I, I like it to be a, a force, an agent of change, so what, there I <laughs> we can't hear you. I think you were thanking the sponsors. Is that right? I actually, I actually yeah, can't was, hear you. He was saying his show is about bit, love, and it doesn't necessarily mean It's all about money. love. Thank and you for translating and he's, and he's, my, uh, my and French. He's, and he's thanking the audience for being the only show where everybody's still here at the end. Well, that's, that's actually very impressive, it yes. It is impressive, isn't it? Thank you. Steve? Go ahead, you. Sorry, I, I'm, uh, I'm a bit tired. My, my brain is kind of... Switching off. <laughs> I, I, I went to the first Le Web. Uh, yeah. yeah, five years ago. Five Doc years too, ago, right? um, 2000 and Mark whatever, Cantor And too. it was 200 people. We had it at Le Senate. It was about uh, 200 people. And uh, to get in, 99 euros? Uh, it was about uh, that, 99 euros. And I don't know. We tried just to cover the cost. You've got to remember, back then, nobody, nobody knew what a 
bloody blog was, except for like weirdos like me and Feldman. And uh, yeah, he knew what a yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, this has gotten bigger and bigger every that. year. Off my and head. every year, I you know, Lo Log's a really good friend of mine. I I hear him, people in the back channel giving him shit because it's too big or. God forbid we have politicians preaching to us, or God forbid we have too many millionaires on stage spamming us. Time. And when it should be just about bloggers and whatever. But the thing is, you know, I don't spend a lot of time on stage, uh, watching people on stage. I'm in the back just talking to people. The reason I come back here every year is because it inspires me. It inspires me to come here every year, meet groovy people, and say, God damn it, there's all these bloody interesting people doing interesting stuff. God damn it, I'm going to be one of these people, whether it kills me or not. And that's why we come here. We don't come here to listen to content. And the other thing you have to know is Log doesn't do this for money. He can make money a lot easier doing other ways. He does it for love. And that's why we're here, because we love what we do. And the minute we stop loving, we're dead. Thank you, Hugh. No, that's, All right. No, thank you. Lauren Feldman, do you agree with that? Do I agree with what? Uh, we're all here. There's no content, and we're in love. Um, <laughs> Well, you know, what, one thing at a time, I'm, I'm not into open source, um, and I'm much more into sex than love. So, th those, those are my answers. Well, you got married. I got married, um, and if you saw my wife, you'd see I'm into sex. <laughs> and love. Love and then sex. And, and, and closed systems. That's all I have to say. All right, so I'd like to see uh, in the audience, uh, Raise your hands for uh, the first three vendors. Which of these three vendors do you think came off the best in this show? Facebook. <laughs> Microsoft. <laughs> Google. All right, anybody, tell, just yell out why you think Google uh, came off well today. Marissa. And what about it? The uh, search, what she talked about in terms of search or uh, refereeing between Arrington and Lemur, or what? <laughs> she looked hot, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hot. repeating. So, you know, this, the, t the tech conferences in Europe, this is my first tech conference in Europe, they seem different. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably true. Fewer elevator really good pitches. Wine. They serve really good wine on stage. <laughs> no, in, 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 in Europe, I, I, I'm, I'm half Scottish, half American. I travel between both. It's, American events tend to be a lot more elevator pitches, kind of people coming up to you and talking like robots. Hi, I got this little startup. Here's what I do. Uh, and and uh, the European ones, they don't do that so much, but they're very understated. And it's like, to, work, you know, to get really pumped up about something, it takes a lot more work. That's just my observation. Mark Hanner, you spend a lot of time in Europe. What do you think about the, uh, the differences between conferences in the, in, uh, the Valley and uh, in Europe? Yeah, um, okay, so the game, the, the reason why Loic moved to America is to play the game, to suck up to the VCs, to you know, go over and hang out with Michael Arrington, and you know, that's the game. But here in Europe, the, you don't have a game like that. You've got to go out there and hustle on your own with, with your own company, with your own ideas. Maybe you don't even speak English as your first language. Yeah, which it's, is insane, right? It's, it's fucked up. <laughs> but, but, but here's the thing. So in one sense, a European entrepreneur is more a pure entrepreneur because he can't play the game. So he's got to stand on it, or she has to stand on their own. Whereas in America, you go sleep with somebody. That or is a bunch of horseshit, okay? Real horseshit. <laughs> Yeah, that, right. that was a bunch you, of horse shit. Let me just say one no, thing. No, I mean, Lauren, I'm sorry. Can I disagree? Yeah. Why Can don't I we disagree ask with what you said? Louis, no, who's been an entrepreneur. I find it offensive, actually. I want to finish. Louis, please, please, please You do. move to San Francisco. You live off of 101 or 280. You go hang out on Sand Hill Road. That is an insider's game. You've got an insider track. It, you have a much greater no, likelihood of success. No, it isn't. That is Bullshit. Yeah, they just want to invest. That's just, that's just that's it's they want to a game. That's why Louis okay. not an inside Listen. game. That's a loser attitude. All right, you had that. It is a loser attitude. Dude, he asked me what I thought. 
go out and But you're hustle, wrong. Okay? They are I hustling. They're all hustling. Mark, Mark, Mark I live in New York. I Mark, have no Mark, none of them had to move to San Francisco. Oh, Mark, calling Silicon Valley an insider's game is... Uh, and totally you're, you're not a loser. You've made some incredible things in your life, but people who tend to do that tend to be losers. It's people who, it's not people who say, I've been unsuccessful in Silicon Valley, which is probably the most merit-based society in the world, is to say, I just wasn't successful, so somebody caused failure. I'd actually like to hear Luik talk about the difference, because he's been an entrepreneur in both continents, and I think he's going to disagree with you. Yeah, Luik, why don't you tell us what you think? Um... Like in general, about life? So, yeah, so why, why did you call? The difference is, well, there is one difference is you don't know how to take time and have lunch. I mean, really, that, like, uh, like that's something which is, like here, we take like two, or, especially in Paris, you take like two or three hours to have lunch because you, you want to know people. And there I feel that it's something which is, you know, like you, you want to go so fast. And there's always a point. Like if I, if I call you, Michael, you'll be like, why are you calling me? Right? And it's, it's like very, like by default, it's like, what's the point? Why are you calling me? Why, do, why, I heard, I invited someone to have dinner and someone said, why? Why? Why should we have dinner? It's like always why? What? You know, what's the purpose? Always. No, really. And, and here we just have a lunch for two hours and we have fun and uh, there is no why, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. I, I've just traveled the world, okay? So one thing I, I'm doing is getting outside of the valley to hear other things. But every time I go, I go to uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, and I meet people who came to Silicon Valley to come on and hang out with me. I, I go to Shenzhen, China, and I meet the same people, the same kind of people. They're all on Twitter, okay? I had dinner in uh, Barcelona, Spain with a guy who runs a business on the port, not even a tech business. He's on Twitter. We're Can I, just, just a second. Now. So... Uh, and I'd love to get back to that, but just to <laughs> Louis's point, is it the two-hour lunches and the constant pleasantries and all the wine drinking that's the reason why Google, Microsoft, no. Yahoo, eBay are all American companies, why Skype was sold to an American company, why Europe constantly looks to the United States for leadership and technology? Is, that, is it because you spend so does China. your days? And so does Israel. Help. Hey, I'll tell you, <laughs> go ahead and cheer. But the point is, look how many American speakers that Luik brought to this conference to come and talk on stage. Why isn't it the other way around? I can, I can answer that. Oh, okay. I, and actually, by the way, the closing session, I feel a little bit with you, right, as a minority. Oh, here. I think this is going much better than I ever thought. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I can already feel the shit I'm going to get for getting so many Americans here at the last session. But anyway, it's I'm It's the Gilmore so Gang. It's the Gilmore Gang. But no, I, I think it's, um, it's actually very good that you take the time and come here because we can, you know, understand better why. And I, 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 still, have, mm -hmm. uh, I still don't know exactly the answer, but one of the, uh, the answers uh, is obviously that you're all at the same place. So Silicon Valley is fantastic, and that's one of the reasons why I moved there, even though I really love Europe and France, is that you all have, like, you want to do a deal with friend feed, you drive around the corner, and what I love now that I gave you some shit about the lunch is the, the deal with Brett Taylor was, I, I, so let me tell you a story. When I wanted to integrate my company with friend feed, I emailed uh, on a Sunday at midnight uh, Brett and the founder of friend feed. Midnight. I got a mail in 10 minutes back. Yeah, sure, you know, let's, that's interesting, let's talk. And what I, another cultural difference now to your advantage is in Europe, you tend to, you know, say, okay, all right, for an appointment, you know, we'll see, we'll plan, and it's, it's already, you know, a little complicated. There, you know, Brett said, just, yeah, just, you know, just come by. He said, when? Well, just, just come by. And so that's something you need to learn. And I took my car and went there. On, on Wednesday, so. three days after, we were integrated into FriendFit. That is the part of Silicon Valley which I, I really, really love, is that everything is, is centered. Here you have to fly. You have to fly to UK. You have to fly to Germany. You have to fly to, you know, all around. And, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I started this. It's, at least for two days, we're in the same room. I, I want to say something, okay? Europe, you can be more efficient. You can integrate features in three days. America, enjoy your meals. You know what I'm saying? Both are kind of wrong, right? I mean, we need to joie de vivre. We have to enjoy life. You only have one life, you know? Silicon Valley, they don't have lives. 
Okay, all they do is work. All right, but see how efficient it is, so that we can get some work That'd done. Work. So I say to Europe, please work you, more efficiently. But and you'd I be say, surprised how much yeah. joy you get out of winning. Yeah, and and it's important. And uh, it, if you're gonna if you're gonna put the effort into creating a startup, but you're you're only gonna be half-assed about it because you need to you know help balance your life out, you're gonna lose because you have to compete with people. I mean, in the United States, we're starting to get our ass kicked by Asia because yeah. they work harder than us. And, and, and cheaper. Uh, yeah. And faster. Yeah. And the problem is that Europe's rich and people like and working 35 to 40 hours a week. And so if you're an that, entrepreneur and that's you work wrong. 50 or 60 hours a week, you that's think wrong. you're really putting... I know. I'm just talking out of my ass yeah. right now. But, but, uh, but, but there are reasons. I'll tell you, the other reason why is the tax structure and incentive structure here is just ridiculous. If you have a startup and you make it big here, here in Paris... Are you looked down on for being successful? Are you looked down on for, for making no, money? No, but it's more complicated, Michael. Like, uh, have you heard of Vente Privé, Michael? Have you heard of a company, a startup called Vente Privé? No? Have you, Steve? No. Have you, Robert, Vente Privé? Vente Privé. No. Lauren? Hugh? Gabe? No. So the founder was just there two panels before. Oh, they won. Wait. The guys that won. No. <laughs> See, help me. I mean. Well, I, I'm sorry, but it isn't a matter of we don't know the company. I don't understand what the hell you're saying. I mean, yeah. I just, I don't understand the words that you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah what no, are you so listening to explain. about? I'm, I'm trying it's to hard make to hear up here because the I'm trying to make a point here. This startup you've never heard of is doing 600 million euros in revenue. Oh, that guy. Yeah. You're telling me about that. Yeah. I mean, and the point is, none of you have heard of it. Why? Can, can I be like, why? Because you don't care. You don't give a shit. This is why I'm... I'm oh, that's bullshit. No. No, no, I'm sorry. I agree. I uh, agree. That's you are not there. Bullshit. I'm sorry. I, the founders... You don't think that in a worldwide depression that we're not interested in somebody who's making 600 million euros? I mean, come on. Yeah. No, we well, just, it's bad PR the, is what it is. The, the, same thing, the same thing could be said, can you name four companies in Israel? Can you say, name four companies actually, in, I can. in Shanghai? Well, actually, you can, I can. Because you're but weird. You I can, know. actually. Louis, but, what the know. hell is your point? I have, I have three full-time writers covering Europe, yes. by the way. I don't know what company you said because I didn't understand what you said. It's great that they're okay. making 600 million a year in, your, in your euros in revenue, but what's your point? That there's, a, that there's a company here doing well that the, most of us haven't heard Here's of? Here's the point. And somehow the point. that proves that European entrepreneurs are as good as American it, entrepreneurs? You don't get the same coverage. We being hugely... So start blogs. Start a blog. And start Twitter. Well, that's, I know that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And then you're covering Europe, and that's great. But the point is that it's, like, it's very, very tough for hugely successful companies to get above national borders. Like, Vente Privé is very, very well known here, and honestly, he doesn't really care about being on TechCrunch. And he's just, you know, su super successful. And I, I didn't mean it, 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 it in, a, in a, any bad way, but my point is that if you are a startup in Germany and you're extremely successful, before you're, you're known globally, it takes a lot more time than in Silicon Valley. And I, how do we fix this? Well, by having TechCrunch France and UK and by having Robert come here. And so I think it's great you're here now that I've said that. But see, it's, it's, it's also, it's in both sides. You know, it's, it's us trying to connect more with you guys there, but it's also you trying to understand more what's happening here and not considering that, you know, there's, there's not much. You not know, much. I hear a lot. There's not much news. I hear a lot. And it's I'm funny not, because when we have a web conference in San Francisco, everybody, everybody's like, Where, why are all these Europeans here and all these Israelis? No, that's wrong. No, there, there are very are. few. Come on. There was, at TechCrunch, how many Israeli companies were at TechCrunch? Yeah, there's seven. Seven yeah. of the 50. Seven was, yeah. of the 50. Tech, TechCrunch is an exception. Uh, Israel, you know, I'm, come on. I yeah, Israel's question. pretty I badass. I mean, they do some, they're, they're hard workers, and per capita, they are the best entrepreneurs in the world. Also, part of the problem with the American-European thing is that American advertisers don't value European traffic for, yeah. for whatever that's, the reason. That's, that's very true, and if you have traffic, for example, uh, it's not only Europe, like uh, in Latin America, sometimes it's very hard to monetize. 
No, I, I, uh, so, I so, so if Europe is, is such a great place to be an entrepreneur, why did you come to San Francisco? It wasn't for the Golden Gate Bridge, was Just it? to be on, uh, on Scobble's blog uh, <laughs> sometime. That, that, that you can do by visiting me. You don't have to move to San Francisco. <laughs> okay, I, I want to say one more thing about work ethic because uh, my company uses almost exclusively European resources. You're spamming point. us. Okay? And I can tell you absolutely that my European workers work as good or better than the Americans, okay? Yeah. And we pay them about half the rate. <laughs> so what we got in the U.S. right now is a bunch of spoiled, overpaid workers who think they're hot shit, okay? Who read tech meme, who... who Why is it that dig. the first time you've ever said a good word about Europe and European investors and entrepreneurs and engineers is when you're in Europe at a tech conference? I don't Why ever is talk it that about Louis, good investors. Why is there it are the, no good investors. Why is it that Luik's reasons for going to the U.S. to this audience of mostly Europeans is completely different than the guest post that he wrote on my blog about why he came to the U.S., which was all about how lazy people are here, the no, tax no. rates, <laughs> why, oh, Luik... Let's pull it up. Let's pull it up no. up here. Let's get that. Let's get that. I mean, honestly, you can't say one thing in America. I never said we were lazy here. in Europe. No, I, I never said well, that. Well, then it's just bullshit. You're just saying it to get the, uh, the appeasement of the crowd. No, we can't. Meanwhile, when I was in China, <laughs> the new walled garden in China, okay, there's four Facebook clones, one of which is worth more than Facebook is in the United huh. States, right? And you've never heard of them. They're kicking our ass, all of our asses. Because they're working, their their best engineers are paid twenty five thousand dollars a year. Oh, yeah. Their best engineers, <laughs> their decent engineers are paid fifteen thousand a year. Right. So they're all kicking our asses, and we're sitting here arguing yep. about it. Drinking wine. But yeah. you know what? You know what's really interesting about the, the era we live in is last last February I was living in Europe. I'm half European, half American, and I was living in a little farmhouse up in Cumbria, which is like this real provincial Provence in uh, England. And I moved to West Texas, uh, to the desert. Anybody see that movie, uh, No Country for Old Men? That's where I live. That was filmed in my neighborhood. And I moved from this little rainy, bleak, you know, English moorland to West Texas. I didn't change jobs. I didn't change jobs at all. I, I moved. Is there, is there a point anywhere in this? No, it's uh, the Gilmore yeah. Gang. Yeah, there's a point. No, I'll is tell you what the point no, is. Do no, we ever no, have a point yes, on the Gilmore Gang? Yes, sir, yes, 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 Michael, there's a point. That, no, that's a, in oh, fact, he is good at a good point, which is he can do the same work because of the internet. Yeah. So if I can get the same workers, I can get better quality workers in Europe at half the rate, I'm getting over. Okay? So though I'm living in Silicon Valley area... So you're taking advantage of Europe's inability to get on tech the hell out of them. Absolutely. You're, so I you're got, the big exploiter. But, well, I I'm going to say, see, see, Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm I saying wanna, all, all the limitations we're talking about are all self-imposed. I just want to point out that uh, Gabe Rivera is on this panel, and he is doing exactly what he has done on every edition of the Gilmore Gang since the beginning, which is say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, on the other hand, on the other hand, Gabe recently uh, made, in uh, Mr. Arrington's opinion, a big mistake and hired a human editor for his, uh, you know, galactic algorithm. So how's that going there, the human editing? D does everybody know who Gabe, uh, Gabe Rivera is? Gabe Rivera is the... Uh, Wizard of Oz behind uh, Tech Meme. Tech, Mouse. Tech, tech Meme. meme. <laughs> Who reads Tech Meme in here? Because huh? I don't read it anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. More than lights Google today. <laughs> Let's talk so about Megan. Talk? Yeah, you should talk. Now, I want to hear from you. So, uh, I think Tech Meme has now been perfected. It's complete. It's uh, the, the melding of man and machine is, has, uh, has given it a power that it didn't have before. And I, and I got the final validation I needed, a negative TechCrunch post, and everyone else was positive about it. So it's great. So why was a Nokia press release at the top of Tech Meme last week? Those are the kinds of things we might need to uh, move down. So in other words, it, the human editor didn't catch that one. The human editor so obviously the the would have put Scoble's oh. post at the top because what are the it's, times a, it's uh, you know, it was clearly the best post. What are the times of day or night uh, when Stop Megan is asleep when we can continue the game tech beam? Uh, give, it, give it a shot. You're not going to tell us. How does that work? Do, do you have somebody who takes over on the 
human side when Megan is uh, off the clock? Well, some of us might be awake, but uh, you know, when by the time when we wake up, we'll uh, remove all the TechCrunch and TechCrunch IT posts. Gabe, oh, I have a right. question. Uh, yeah. Marissa on stage today talked briefly about Google News and said that it continues to be entirely algorithmic and computer selected. I actually didn't know that. I assumed there was some human involvement there. Whether it's true or not, do you believe that there is a perfect algorithm that you just failed, that there's, there is a way for computers to create a non-gameable news site, news aggregator? Uh, did you take the easy way out or do you actually think there's, it's impossible to do I think it's impossible to do because it requires, like, you need, if you work out all the problem scenarios, you, it ends, it works out that you need true AI. You need human intelligence in some cases to make right. the best news site. And Google News, you know, it's like, it, it's, it benefits from being linked on the front page of Google. Like, no, like, people generally don't really love Google News when there are real alternatives. The search is great. I use the search. Google News Search is the best news search. So if but it's if it's if your statement that it is your opinion that it might be impossible to have an entirely algorithmically selected news aggregator, have you? It's possible. It's just not. It doesn't shine next to the well alternative. So TechBeam has shown, has been shining. So tell the truth. Have you really been editing it all along? <laughs> I, we were editing it in November as we were gearing up for uh, for for this announcement. Um, now, it gave, it, well, the question is: If he was hand editing it all along, why was TechCrunch always at the top? Always. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you, I, I think we deserve to be at the top. <laughs> I think we we bust were our butts paying, breaking news left so and right. Were you so when you put a, when you put no. a post up that says Twitter. That deserves to be at the top of TechCrunch. You know, that TechCrunch. wasn't on TechMe, but that Twitter post was on the front page of the New York Times tech section. But I'd actually like Gabe to answer the question. Have you been editing it all along? No, I haven't been editing it all along. Although, I mean, it depends on what you call editing. I have, I have Well, it's made, been your algorithm. It's based there, on your... It's just like when there were problems that reach an... Ex, like, when there was extreme suckage, I, I would intervene. That's, that's why I'm not on TechMeme anymore. It's impossible. Now. It's impossible to build a perfect algorithm, because there's always going to be more spammers and gamers who are going to game it, and, and that's it. But at the end of the day, the, it's all like the question I have for you, Gabe, is: Okay, you have two people doing TechMeme now. I have five thousand people on FriendFeed huh? feeding me the news. Why is Tech meme better than it. friend feed, where I have 5,000 people feeding me the news. Because you have 5,000 probable morons following you who can give you, <laughs> who can give you wrong information. Yeah, but That's, you're one of them. Okay, okay so far, just like, you know what? I have, you have your morons, I have my dopes. It's all like semantics. The point is, though, that how do you separate the famous signal from noise? How do you? I click like on the cool stuff, like your videos. In other words, you have no answer. <laughs> Gabe. Oh, uh, seriously, the, the crowd is clicking on like there. The, but well, what, but uh, how do you know that the crowd just isn't stupid? That's what I don't understand about this how whole thing. How do I know thing. his algorithm isn't stupid? You don't, but you have a better chance with it, it one guy a, and a dopey algorithm it, than 5,000 fools I, on Twitter. I liked, I liked uh, TechCrunch's post on the Nokia and the, and the Engadget post on the Nokia. He put yeah. the pr freaking press release yeah. at the I top. Would, I would rather trust one man, Gabe Rivera, <laughs> than all of Twitter for my tech news. Yeah. I really but, would. Hey, guys, do you realize they have no idea what you're talking about? Well, what no, else? They're on Twitter. <laughs> They're all looking at No, Red but Peter I mean, and like, all, and also on the internet. Like, they can are watch we, I mean, the video should we, and should we, no, I mean, I, over and I, when, over until they that's, understand I, I, mis I did, didn't express myself well. Sorry. I meant, do you realize that these doesn't matter so, so much, like Twitter versus tech meme versus? I, I, I got a text here saying it's a great show. Came oh. from Holland. So carry on. All right. It's a Gilmore right. gang. It's also supposed to matter. All right. Anyway, so I'd, like to, I'd like to. I'd uh, like to. I know it's the Gilmore gang, but I, I, I'd really like to uh, thank you actually for being taking the time, not asking what's the point to come to Paris, and uh, and you've been here. You know, like most of you for the five edition of Le Web. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Why don't you hold Le Web in California next year? <laughs> because then we wouldn't have to fly out here. And it'd be so much nicer because Paris is beautiful, but Paris in December is not quite as great as Paris. So you, in the you'd rather have everybody fly there, and then ship everyone in from Europe. Who cares? 
to the conference. It'd be much easier for me. Well, you already have, <laughs> you already have some events there, so the idea is to help Europe. But we I, I actually want to thank you for doing this. It's yeah. a, this is a highlight of my year. It's, yeah. it's awesome, and I look forward to next year. Loic and Geraldine Rock, don't you, you agree? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and,